Why do we need teacher librarians? We're the only horizontal teacher I know. We're the ones who can connect all the different content areas, blend them together, and also say to the child, what are you interested in? Particle physics and jazz. I like all types of dance. Robotic engineering. The human brain is my passion. I really like football. I love math. I like ballet. I love art. And graphic design. I like surfing. I really like learning about magic tricks. Kids need a space and they need a safe space to explore not just what they have presented to them at school, but also the things that they're passionate about and things that they're excited about. And libraries are really a place where that can happen because they're a broad interdisciplinary environment where we have an opportunity to really explore the things that we're excited about. People think of the library as some place where, you know, you have to be quiet. The teacher librarians don't run libraries like that. Teacher librarians know that students need room, they need a chance to explore, and so we encourage cooperative learning. We encourage them to talk together. In this generation, they crave experiences that are especially active, participatory, visual, collaborative, fast-moving, quick-thinking, rapid-responding, and spontaneous. So. Try to fit all of that in your lessons. We know that kids are going to want to communicate using technology. And so the librarians, because they're oftentimes in the vanguard for the utilization of technology, then can teach them how to do that safely and responsibly and productively. They have the tools and they've got the knowledge and they've got the connection. That's a three-prong advantage that librarians have that the other teachers don't have. From the librarian, we've learned how to create a blog, what to put in a blog, what are the specific types of rules that kind of go with blogging, and she's incorporated a lot what we're learning in our Spanish class. We were able to expand the classroom, and the students met in the library. We had several levels also of students who were not that savvy as far as technology was concerned. Concerned, and so she was there to assist them. We learned how to embed photos, vokies, um, animations, give credits to images. She taught us how to screenshot. I use that whenever I use my computer. Teenage students think they're really, really good at using technology to access information and to do the things that they need to do. And students also think that they're good drivers. So what we need to do is show them that there are critical thinking habits they can apply in their use of information and use of resources to help them become more critical users of that information. We have a lot of work to do to prepare our students more effectively to make them college ready. Ever since we were certificated, library teachers have the standard of information literacy and we have been teaching the integration of technology along with reading, writing, and along with research all these years. When the students go online and there's nobody there to guide them, they're just completely lost. The internet's so big and you don't really know where to even start. So many of them think that Google is the source that they're using, and so I use the analogy that Google is just like me. I go out and I walk around the library and I pull all these book resources in for you. And I go on the internet and I find resources for you. That's all Google does. It goes out and searches the net. But that doesn't mean that it's going to give you reliable information. They think that there's that magical site out there. They can type in a question and they're going to find the answer to the question that the teachers asked them. And it doesn't. There's no magic side out there and they need to be able to critically think about that and that's the piece that's missing. We teach kids to walk across the street holding hands before we let them walk across the street themselves. We don't want those three-year-olds, those seven-year-olds, those ten-year-olds to cross that street until we know that they know how to look both ways. In the information world, that looking both ways includes looking at the source looking at the credibility, looking at the accuracy, and looking at the reliability of who wrote 
that website. When I do research for websites, I usually need to do a website evaluation, and I wouldn't use the website if I don't know who created it or who wrote the articles. I also learned from my librarian that everything on the internet isn't true, like the tree octopus webpage. As originators of information, there's a certain responsibility that author has, and we generally wait till much older ages to begin instilling value of that later in life. We, that we need to do that from the moment they walk in the door. So before I had a librarian, I just went on Google and searched up whatever I was looking for, and I went on websites that were unreliable and they just used whatever information they gave me. It used to be that the information that a child would produce would go on a refrigerator door. Now, it's not going on a refrigerator door, it's going out for the whole world to see. We have to think about their digital tattoo. It used to be called a digital footprint, but now it's called a digital tattoo because it never goes away. When I was a principal, the single best thing I did was hire a teacher librarian to work with my staff. She really ran point on all the professional development, the technology integration, working collaboratively with teachers to develop lessons, either as a group or individually. What I would like to see is that districts start to understand the power that they have when they have a teacher librarian. I see many districts go out and they spend all kinds of money on hiring outside agencies to come in to provide professional development. And it's sad because right there on their campuses, if they have a teacher librarian, they have professional developers right there that they're just not even looking at. And I want them to be aware that, you know, hey, I've got one of those. I need to start putting them to use. You have a, a person on your staff who is looking at the Common Core and the best ways to implement it and communicating that and supporting that in other teachers on the campus. By collaborating together, we really have been able to put together these projects for the students that are much more interdisciplinary and um, much more meaningful. The last school that I taught at had a librarian for two mornings per week. and. That was pretty much non-existent. As a sixth grade teacher, I, I don't have the time or the resources to know about all the new books that are coming out and all of the acceptable digital resources that are available today. It's been such a lifesaver to have a teacher librarian there that I could send my students to to help us. Teacher librarians can bring the whole plate to the table. We are the, the lintel piece that holds the door frame in place. Let's tap into what the kids want to learn and connect it to what they have to learn. That's what a teacher librarian is armed and ready to do.